I love this time of the year. The leaves are turning, there's a bracing chill in the air. Plus, there's a whole new crop of female grad students about to put on just enough winter weight to make them needy and vulnerable. <laughs> That's right, honey. Have another calzone. Daddy can wait. <laughs> Isn't there university policy against dating graduate students? No, if you can talk to them, you can ask them out. Damn, there's always a catch. Hey, guys. Hey, Leslie. So, dumbass, I heard you made a grad student throw up last night. The truth can indeed be a finger down the throat of those unprepared to hear it. But why should I cater to second-rate minds? Because first-rate minds call you dumbass? Oh, yeah? Well, you're a mean person. Excuse me, Dr. Cooper. I'm Ramona Nowitzki. I was at your talk last night. I think you're just brilliant. Well, that is the prevailing opinion. <laughs> oh, now I'm gonna throw up. Howard Wallowitz, Department of Engineering, co-designer of the International Space Station's liquid waste disposal system. Ew. Sheldon, do you have any idea what just happened? Yes. Apparently, I'm getting a free dinner. <laughs> Yeah, no, this thing's majorly out of order. See? Sorry. Okay. Guess I'm taking the stairs. Where are you going? For a? Oh, are you here to see Leonard? No, Dr. Cooper. Dr. Sheldon Cooper? <laughs> We're having dinner. Sheldon Cooper. <laughs> Tall, thin, looks a little like a giant praying mantis. <laughs> he is cute, isn't he? Cooper. Hi, dear friends. Welcome back to English Fluency Mission. I am Steve, your English Fluency Coach. Today's video is the English Vocab and Phrase Lesson 3rd of Big Bang Theory. So without further ado, let's jump into the topic. If you are new here and have not subscribed to our channel, then do subscribe to our channel and hit the bell, so you may get the notifications for the upcoming video lessons. I love this time of the year. The leaves are turning, there's a bracing chill in the air. Plus, there's a whole new crop of female grad students about to put on just enough winter weight to make them needy and vulnerable. <laughs> bracing is an adjective. If you describe something, especially a place, climate, or activity as bracing, you mean that it makes you feel fresh and full of energy. For example, there is a bracing chill in the air. This means, the cold and chill air is making me feel fresh and giving me a sort of energy. Next. I had enjoyed the bracing walk on the beach while being in Mumbai. Means, I have enjoyed an energetic walk on the beach. Last. We have got bracing news from the financial markets. Means, we have got wonderful news from the financial market. It may be regarding high profit or boom in the prices. I love this time of the year. The leaves are turning, there's a bracing chill in the air. Plus, there's a whole new crop of female grad students about to put on just enough winter weight to make them needy and vulnerable. <laughs> vulnerable as an adjective means, someone who is vulnerable, is weak, and without protection, and they can be easily hurt physically or emotionally. Or someone can easily attack them, because they are without protection. For example, Old people are often particularly vulnerable members of our society. This means, older people are often weak members of society, and anyone can attack them easily, because they don't have the capability to fight back. Next. Tourists are more vulnerable to attack, because they do not know, which areas of the city to avoid. Means, tourists can be easily attacked by terrorists, because they are unaware of the risky areas of the city. Last. Older people are especially vulnerable to cold temperatures even inside their homes. This means, older people can be easily attacked by cold temperatures because they have very little immunity. That's right, honey. Have another calzone. Daddy can wait. <laughs> calzone as a noun means, a dish of Italian origin consisting of, pizza dough, folded over a filling of cheese and tomatoes, herbs, ham, etc. For example, there are more than two dozen varieties of pizza and a calzone stuffed with Nutella and Oreos. 
Isn't there a university policy against dating graduate students? No, if you can talk to them, you can ask them out. Damn, there's always a catch. <laughs> there's a catch is a phrase which is a slang term, that means, there is always some additional thing, you have to do, to get what you want. For example, in the clip, Raj says, isn't there a policy against dating graduate students? Then Leonard says, no if you can talk to them, you can ask them out. Means, if you have the guts to talk to them at first, then you may ask them to go out with you. Then Raj says, damn, there's always a catch. This means, he finds himself weak in talking with girls at first. So talking to girls for him is an additional thing that he has to do before taking a girl out for a date. So he said, there's always a catch. Suppose, someone has gone to face an interview and he is weak in English communication but good in his subject. And before going he finds that interview will be in English only. Then he can say, there's always a catch. Means, for clearing the interview, he will have to get command over the English language and that will be an additional thing for him. Isn't there a university policy against dating graduate students? No, if you can talk to them, you can ask them out. Damn, there's always a catch. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, Leslie. So, dumbass, I heard you made a grad student throw up last night. <laughs> We have explained dumbass in another video, learn English with TV 2 and a half man lesson 1. The link to this video lesson is given in the description below and above i button. You may watch this video lesson after completing this lesson. If you really want to improve your English fluency to a greater extent, then I recommend you using Amazon Audible, where you get one free book to listen for free every month, irrespective of their actual price. When you read and listen to a book at the same time, then it helps you a lot to improve your vocabulary and accent as well. Throw up is a phrasal verb that means, to suddenly leave something, such as your job or your home. It also means, to vomit. For example, in the clip, Leslie says, So dumbass, I heard you made a grad student throw up last night. This means, you made a grad student leave the class last night. Next, at the party, he ate a lot and then threw up means, he ate a lot and then vomited because of overeating. Last. He can throw up his job as a waiter. <laughs> this means, he can suddenly leave his job as a waiter. Hey guys. Hey Leslie. So, dumbass, I heard you made a grad student throw up last night. <laughs> the truth can indeed be a finger down the throat of those unprepared to hear it. <laughs> indeed is an adverb that is used to express, that something is correct, or used to emphasize something said, or about to be said. Instead of saying really, people use indeed. For example, if he has indeed quit his job, why is he still here? Or if he has really quit his job, why is he still here? Next. She said she won't come back until Monday. Won't she, indeed? Or won't she, really? Whether we use really or indeed in a sentence. Both have the same meaning last. It was impossible to find work and, indeed, it became increasingly hard to keep looking for a job. The truth can indeed be a finger down the throat of those unprepared to hear it. <laughs> finger down the throat is a phrase that means, a fact or situation, that is very annoying and difficult to accept. For example, if we say to someone, you speak very bad English. This is a fact that is difficult to accept by anyone who speaks English. This situation is called finger down the throat. Next. The truth can indeed be a finger down the throat of those unprepared to hear it. This means, the truth can really be difficult to accept to those who are unprepared to hear it. The truth can indeed be a finger down the throat of those unprepared to hear it. <laughs> but why should I cater to second-rate minds? Because first-rate minds call you dumbass? <laughs> cater to is a phrasal verb that means, to satisfy a need, or to provide what is wanted, or needed by a particular person, or group. For example, there are more and more TV shows, catering to young male audiences. This means, TV shows are fulfilling the demand of the audience by providing them those shows which they want to see. Next. In the clip, Sheldon says, why should I cater to second-rate minds? Means, why should I provide valuable information about physics to second-rate minds? Second-rate minds mean, those who have weak minds. 
last. We cater to an exclusive clientele. This means, we provide our services to an exclusive clientele. But why should I cater to second-rate minds? Because first-rate minds call you dumbass? <laughs> oh yeah? Well, you're a mean person. <laughs> mean as an adjective means, unkind or unpleasant. It also means poor, dirty, cheap, and of bad quality. For example, he was born in the mean streets of Detroit in 1945. Here, mean stands for poor and dirty. Next, stop being so mean to me. Means, stop being unkind to me. Last, you are a mean person. This means, you are an unpleasant and cheap person. Excuse me, Dr. Cooper. I'm Ramona Nowitzki. I was at your talk last night. I think you're just brilliant. Well, that is the prevailing opinion. <laughs> oh, now I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> Brilliant as an adjective means, a person who is extremely intelligent or skilled. Or something that is full of light, shining, or bright in color, is also called brilliant. For example, the sky was a brilliant, cloudless blue. Next, her mother was a brilliant scientist. Last, the idea was quite brilliant. While speaking, we can replace very intelligent with brilliant. Excuse me, Dr. Cooper. I'm Ramona Nowitzki. I was at your talk last night. I think you're just brilliant. Well, that is the prevailing opinion. <laughs> oh, now I'm gonna throw up. Prevailing as an adjective means, existing and accepted. For example, the prevailing view is that economic growth is likely to slow down. Means, existing view is that economic growth is likely to slow down. Next, the bank said, it will buy the shares at the prevailing market price. This means, the bank will buy the shares at an existing price. Next, the prevailing market conditions are not favorable to small investors. This means, the existing market conditions are not favorable to small investors. Last, I think you are brilliant Dr. Cooper. Well, this is the prevailing opinion. This means, this is an existed and accepted opinion by everyone that Dr. Cooper is brilliant. Howard Wallowitz, Department of Engineering, co-designer of the International Space Station's Liquid Waste Disposal System. Ew. Ew is used to express, disgust or distaste. For example, Ew. I'd hate to think what he has done. Second, Ew. What's that smell? Third, ew. I hate mushrooms. Last, you. How can you eat that? Howard Wallowitz, Department of Engineering, co designer of the International Space Station's Liquid Waste Disposal System. Ew. Sheldon, do you have any idea what just happened? Yes. Apparently, I'm getting a free dinner. <laughs> Apparently is an adverb and we use apparently to indicate that the information we are giving, is something, that we have heard, but we are not certain or sure, that it is true. Suppose, you have heard that China is going to attack its neighbor country, but you are not sure about it, you don't know whether it is true or not, then you will say. Apparently, China is going to attack its neighboring country. By using apparently, you are indicating that the information I am sharing with you, I got from some source, but I am not certain about it. Let's look at an another example. Oil prices fell this week, apparently because of overproduction. So here I am indicating that oil prices fell down, because of overproduction, but I am not sure about the main reason. I am just expressing, what I have heard, correct or wrong, I don't know. Oh, yeah, no, this thing's majorly out of order. See? Sorry. Okay. Guess I'm taking the stairs. Where are you going? 4A. Oh, are you here to see Leonard? No, Dr. Cooper. <laughs> Dr. Sheldon Cooper? <laughs> see is a verb. When you see something, you notice it using your eyes. It also means to meet or visit someone, or to visit a place. And, in this clip, it is used as, to meet or visit. For example, we're seeing friends this weekend means, we are meeting friends. 
Next. My mother is seeing the doctor again next week. Means, my mother is visiting the doctor next week. Last. Mick wants to see you in his office right away. Means, Mick wants to meet you in his office just now. We're having dinner. Sheldon Cooper. <laughs> Tall, thin, looks a little like a giant praying mantis. <laughs> he is cute, isn't he? <laughs> Sheldon Cooper. <laughs> giant as a noun means, someone who is taller or larger than usual. It also means, a very successful and powerful person or organization. For example, Dad terrified us with stories of a big bad giant, who ate little children. Next. To a small child, Mr. Preston must seem like a giant, he's about 6 feet 5 inches. Last. He was one of the political giants of this century. Means, he was the most successful politician of this century. Praying mantis as a noun means, a large green insect, that holds its front legs in a way, that makes it look as if it is praying, when it is waiting to catch another insect. In this clip, Penny calls Sheldon, a giant praying mantis. Means, he looks like a very big praying mantis. Next. Most people are afraid of praying mantis. <laughs> 